I want to keep bleeding for you, but I can only give you a dollar. So you're going to find everything under the sun is just going to be the biggest management of personnel over that period of time that you have. Brooke's nodding her head because she knows. Um, so your launch strategy, you've already got everything done. Kickstarter and Indiegogo has approved your campaign. Your team is right behind you. You know where your first 30% is coming from. You've done all your art. And notice that I've just mentioned art now for the first time. And the reason I've mentioned that is that your, each of your social media platforms and your website and your campaign page itself, visuals are key. Whether it's book art, whether it's poster art, whether it's any kind of art of your face. Uh, you notice I had a picture of myself at the very beginning, something that's recognizable. Uh, even if it's just quotes from your book done on, like, have you guys have seen Facebook and Instagram where it's like quotes just on text on a colored background with a book title? Um, those things help your campaign and get people visually engaged because as much as we love to read and I'm here to talk to authors, in a campaign setting in a social media environment, text kills. So color it up a little bit. Um, you're going to need campaign uh, art for your social media. Like The way that you use an image on Twitter is different from Facebook. It's different from Instagram. It's going to be different from Facebook. It's going to be different on all of those platforms. You're going to need launch art. Our campaigns launch. You're going to need reward or perk art. Perks or rewards. Perks are uh, Kickstarter. Rewards are Indiegogo, I believe. They could be switched. But do a piece of art for each one of your perks. That way you have something visual to tweet out about. Um, when your campaign ends, I've got a 50, this is going to sound really neurotic, I have a 56 hour by hour strategy for what to do in the last 56 out of your, hours of your campaign. And as Olga sat there with me when we were on the writing retreat, she watched me take an hour and a half and write it all and it's detailed. You're tweeting every four hour, or four times an hour, and you're doing this, you're doing that, you're sharing images, you're doing content, and you're doing your countdown. One hour, to, or two days till the campaign ends. 24 hours of the campaign ends, six hours, one hour, half hour. Those visual pieces, if you can design them ahead in advance, you'll save yourself a lot of time. And if you have questions about those, I can definitely email you a list of things that you need as long with, uh, anybody good with Photoshop? No. <laughs> There's a really wonderful site called canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. They are templated out so that all the sizes of the social media tools, including the Facebook headers, the Facebook toasts, Twitter headers, Twitter posts, Instagram, they're already pre-sized for you, so you just upload your original art, You up, they can pull text to do overlay on top of it and take care of it for you without having to have Photoshop, and it's absolutely free. What's it called again? Canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. I recommend this for if you're marketing yourself, whether you're doing a crowdfunding campaign or you're not, this is a really, really good platform tool for you to create quotes, to create images. Um, like if you saw my page, I put an image up of this, the opening slide and I used Canva to size that correctly for Instagram and social media. Um, Canva can be used outside of your crowdfunding campaign to give you familiar with it and time with it. The beautiful thing is they give you some pre-done templates that you can learn how to use Canva without having to actually uh, create things right off the bat. So let's go, go to your soft launch. Um, you've got your team, you've got your audience, your soft launch is two to three days before your hard launch, which is your firm date that you go, I launched this campaign and it's now available to the world. And the clock starts ticking down. That's when you get your 30% your to go to the page and review the page and ask all the questions and give them hard committals. And then you go to your hard launch. You press the button and then you unleash hell, for a lack of a better term. You unleash your team and your supporters to the page to get your donations in, your contributions in, and tweeting out. Um, there is a site that I would highly recommend as part of your pre-launch and launch strategy called Thunderclap. It's called thunderclap.it and what you do is you get about 100 to 200 people or whatever the number you want to pre-commit to sharing a message that you've created about the launch of the campaign. Your campaign is launched. As soon as the thunderclap hit or you hit that number that you need to reach, whether it's 100, 200, whatever your goal is, on the day that you choose, thunderclap through Twitter, Facebook, and I believe now Instagram, will send that message out simultaneously through all of those different networks. So if you have me on your team with my 1,700 Facebook fans and my 1,800 Twitter followers, all of my people will see that, in addition to all of Zolda's if she's on your team, and Brooks if she's on your team. So it's one day, one time, biggest possible spread that you could hit at the same time. I recommend doing that for the beginning of your campaign and for the end of your campaign. 
because it's going to take you about two weeks to get everything ramp, ramp, ramped up in uh, ThunderCloud. So then you've done your hog launch, you've notified your entire network by email if you have a mailing list, like MailChimp or any of those things, you've told them what's going on, you've posted on Facebook, you've post posted on Twitter, um, you started emailing direct friends and family, you launch on your Monday or Tuesday morning or evening and you've gotten your schedule going, uh, you do it just after you've gone, gotten home from work or before you've gotten home from work. Some people take the first day off of work because it can be entirely stressful. Uh, again, I wanna reiterate, it's a full-time job and it's going to be the biggest emotional roller coaster that you've probably gone on in a long time. Um, and then you run your campaign for 30 or 40 days. So all of that pre-planning, all of that work that you've done goes right into 30 straight days of hard work. So your campaign strategy. Again, I'm reiterating this number because it's extremely important. Secure you 30% before you launch your campaign publicly. Get it in there, know where it's coming from, what it's coming from, and if somebody in that list of 30% drops off for whatever reason, ask them why, try to refill it. Email everyone you know. Email brings in 20% more than any other source, and contributing through email are 34% higher because it's personal. These are people that know you. Um, three things I want you to never do. Never start your email with, hey, um, John, I, I don't really do this, but, don't, don't be passive aggressive. Be firm, be polite, be civil. Start your, your emails with, um, hey Ann, I noticed you're working on a new book. How's it going? I'd love to hear about it. By the way, here's this thing I'm doing. So start it with an introductory of get the person engaged so they're not coming in right away with, oh, you're selling me something. And give them the option. Don't tell them that they need to contribute. Give, ask them to look at it. Ask them to give you advice. Um, I like popular music and there's this artist named Pitbull and he's got this really great quote, if you ask money, you're gonna get him advice, but if you ask for advice, you're gonna get money twice. So always ask people to check the campaign out. Always ask people for advice on where they can go to reach. Always ask them if they know of anything that you may need. Do they know of media? Do they know of somebody that um, likes campaigns? Ask questions and then they'll turn around and probably go, hey, you know what, here's five bucks in addition to that thing that you need. Clear daily, have clear daily call to actions. What I mean by that is you can't just put your campaign up and let your social media feeds go cold. You can't put your Facebook or, or Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign up and let your emails go cold. Ask people to do things. Hey, um, and could you share this out for me today? Um, Isolda, can you email somebody you might know in the, pro like give people actions to do if it's your Direct asks for your team, do that. If it's Facebook, hey everybody, could you share this on your wall today? Give people things to do and keep them going. Get a marketing schedule. You know what your 30 days are going to be. Does a holiday come up? Uh, again, if you're a zombie family like me and you're doing a zombie book, is The Walking Dead airing? Can you tailor something around the episode to The Walking Dead that would bring people over from The Walking Dead audience? Get those things in play ahead of time so that you can leverage that as much as you possibly can. Add your campaign to your email signature. It's gonna sound, feel cheesy, it's gonna be weird. I know probably most of us have an email signature. Uh, my name is Mike Doherty, author, writer, director, blah, 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 blah. P.S. I'm running a crowdfunding campaign. Check it out at bam. Um, create posts tailored to each social media. 22% of campaigns raised funds from social media itself. So the nice thing is you can start tracking where people are coming from. Kickstarter and Indiegogo are really, really good about telling you where your analytics are from but I will tell you analytics that I have found that you're not gonna see in their numbers. The more you tweet, the more your contributions are going to go up. Not directly from Twitter, but there's the seven and one rule. And Ann and I have talked about this rule several times in the past. People need to see, touch, hear, feel, or sense things seven times before they make a decision. So if you can get them on Facebook, and you can get them on Twitter, and then you can get them on Instagram, and you can get them on Twitter, and you can get them on Facebook, by the time they've seen it again, if they're unfamiliar with it, they're going to make a decision to buy. Um, if you do not have a community on social media, you've never gone on Twitter before, you've never got created a Facebook fan page, don't create one. I'm going to be honest with you up front, if you don't create it before your campaign or you don't have it in existence, don't try to do it for the campaign because we're all savvy buyers. We know when we're being sold to. We know when somebody's doing something just to get money out of our pocket. And if you've created a campaign 15 days ago, and your campaign launched 10 days ago, and all of your posts are about your crowdfunding and not about engagement, that, that social media avenue is dead for you because people sell it and see it right away. 
Um, the other thing that I want to advise during a campaign strategy is, is keep another number roll, three to one. For every three posts on Twitter about someone else, you're allowed one post about yourself. And when I say three posts about someone else, I mean retweet something as Olda says, uh, comment something to Catherine, say something to John, and then talk about your campaign. As your, your numbers increase and your people go up, that three can be thanking your community, um, thanking Brooke for contributing publicly because that guilts the next person to read this to actually want to come in. Retweet somebody that said something about your campaign kindly or um, retweet Insta Indiegogo or Kickstarter if they share it. Like That three can start to fluctuate between things that are not direct asks. Uh, there's a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. If you're not familiar with him, I recommend getting his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. What it does is it breaks down each social media platform uh, really, really well with visual case studies of this is what worked and this is what didn't. And his philosophy is just exactly the same as mine. It's you give, jab, 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 which is give, 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 and then you ask. So you give content, you give thanks, you give appreciation, then you ask for the sale, or you ask for the contribution. And, and Anne hates that name, so he, he shall not be made. Yes, sir. And if you're not big on social media, what do you do? How, how, what, what are your other options? Get old school. And I, I don't mean that in a derogatory term. I mean just create flyers, create posters. If the avenues that you're, you go to things like this more frequently and you know you see people more frequently in person than online, leverage that. That's why I mentioned business cards or postcards. Or, or just do print out flyers from your computer that you can hang up in a Starbucks or your coffee shop or your bookstore. Um, you, be like Grateful Dead. 